Hello. I'm going to give you a quick story about how watching snook for the last 40 years of my life hasn't been a complete waste of time. Um, well, it has really, hasn't it? Anyway, uh, yeah, earlier in the week, I uh, had the, one of the dogs out. I've got to take them separately. I've got two Labradors. I've got to take them separately because they're an absolute nightmare together. So I got running with them. And I got to him in the street. As I turned right, in the distance, 100 metres or so, I've seen what looks to be a dog on its own. And I thought it was a black Labrador, same as mine. Anyway, as I get closer, I realise it's not on its own, and it's not a Labrador, it's a Rottweiler. The owner's in the middle of the road, which I didn't see from the, my angle. And uh, I know it is straight away. It's a guy who lives the opposite end of the street to me. He seems all right. He's a bit of a hard case, though. He's the kind of guy, uh, if, if he got knocked over by a tank, he'd kind of he'd get up and chase after them. Yeah, not to be tried for this guy. Anyway, as I get closer, um, I said to him, I says, oh, your dog's not going to attack mine, is he? He's only a little... And he says, oh, don't worry about him, he's daft. I was like, oh, okay, then. There's nothing I can do about it. You just flatten me anyway. So, um, anyway, I said to him, I says, oh, do you like your snook? He says, oh, yeah. He says, I thought you did. I said, a couple of years ago, I remember seeing you, you at the Ronnie O'Sullivan uh, exhibition game at the Mill House, which is like the local legend. And he says, oh, yeah, I love snooker. I got my photo taken with him. I was like, oh, brilliant. I says, oh, the, the snooker on telly this week, you know, on, on Quest. He says, oh, no, I've been watching it. You can only watch So anyway, we're having this snooker chat. All very amicable. Um, go on my way. A couple of days later, doing my same route. And I've just come past his house. And his door opens. And I'm thinking, oh, man, this bloody, this Rottweiler dog. I'm, I'm concerned for my animal. So anyway, he's opened the door. He says, uh, oh, who won, it? who won? Did he run your sort of win the snooker? I says, oh, have you not watched it? I says, you can get it on YouTube. He says, oh, just tell us. I says, oh, yeah, yeah, he won. So anyway, he'd come out just to see me. And people don't do that for me. I felt ever so special. So yeah, um, all these years of watching snooker, and now I've got like a, a hard mate who lives at the end of the street. So I was made up, I had a, a smile on my face all the way, all the way home. Anyway, there you go. Um, so continuing from where I left off last time, uh, I think I think it was Tease for Fears, Everybody Wants to Rule the World, and the link to that one is I'm going to do Ordinary World by Duran Duran, so I'm just going to do the solo. So let's have a little look at that. Yeah, so I'm going to do the um, solo for Ordinary World by Duran Duran, probably my favourite Duran Duran song I've heard. There might be better ones out there, but I'm only know the singles. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to play through it first. As you can see, I'm, I'm deliberately playing a, a cheaper guitar rather than a, a fancy one. And the whole point of this channel is to try and inspire someone who maybe has a, an old guitar kicking around and they've never done anything with it and think, do you know what, I can, I can do that. And this is, this is perfect because it's not particularly difficult, it's all on one string and it's quite a, a nice melodic solo. So I'm going to play through it first and then I'll break it down and I'll be able to put that the, the numbers, the, the fret numbers at the bottom of the screen as well. So yeah, shut up Mark, play it. So here we go. So, uh, yeah, let's, let's do it. So it's going to start everything on the first string. So it goes 12, 12, 12, 12, 11, 11, 11, 9, So the first bit, 12, 12, 12, 12, 11, 11, 11, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 7, 7, 7. Do that again. 12, 12, 12, 12, 11, 11, 11, 9, 9, 9, 9, 7, 7, 7. Next bit, starts on a 14. 14, 14, 14, 14, 12, 12, 12, 11, 11, 11, 11, 9, 9, 9, 7, oh, 7, 7, oh, 7, oh. And then that's repeated. 
So yeah, give that a little go. And from Unreal by Duran Duran, I was thinking of the next link. And what I've gone with, the guitar player actually plays that solo, is called Warren Cuccarillo, I think that's how you pronounce it. And he played guitar with uh, Frank Zappa for a time. And one of my kind of, one of the more accessible Frank Zappa tunes is something called Watermelon in Easter Hay. So I'm gonna have a little look at that, very, very short look at it, because uh, I can't imagine many of my target audience are really into Frank Zappa. Uh, so yeah, it's, I'll have a little look at that now. Okay. Yes, yeah, so we're gonna have a little look at Watermelon Easter Hay by Frank Zappa. And the only thing I want you to get from this is that music doesn't all ha use the same time signature. The main time signature for pop, rock music, most forms of music is 4-4, four, four, which is this. It's like one, two, three, four, 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 one. So most songs that you will listen to will be in 4-4. Four, four. And some artists like to kind of experiment with time signatures, Frank Zappa, um, he's one of them. Rush, Canadian rock band, they used to use a lot of different time signatures. So this song is in 9-4. So let me just quickly go over the, the main kind of riff. So it's like, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, makes it 9-4 so I'm, I'm gonna have a little blast around it and see how I get on so here we go Enjoy the video if you can give it a like and subscribe if you haven't, that'd be brilliant. Okay, cheers, thanks.